Go ahead. Let's Malcolm go. Reed, so before we get going with what we're going to talk about, we want to see how well does Malcolm Reed know black musicians, black um, hip hop, whatever. Okay. Because he claims to be the king. So I'm going to give you three songs, Reed. You get 15 <laughs> seconds of instrumental. Let's see if you can guess the artist and the name of the song. All right. You got that? All right. Let's do it. Okay. Song number one. <clears throat> and we, we may go as far back as like mid 90s, maybe. Farther back we go, the better. Okay. All right. Here we go. You ready? Uh -huh. All right. Here's the first one. Here's the easy one. Come on, bro. What? Come on, bro. All right, what is this? <laughs> Tupac Amaro Shakur, man. Keep your head up. Okay. We performed right. that song at the Black History Month program in McKinney last year. It was lit. Keep your head up. It's a good one. It was lit. Tell All right. Tell <clears throat> Malcolm Reed, you're one for one. Um, <laughs> that was an evil. That Easy was money. Evil. That's like preliminary. Here we go. I'm I'm picking songs that I like to hear. All right, let's but, go. Show you know, we're just we're just saying. Okay. DJ in the house. The RZA. The Z The Jizza. Hold up. <laughs> Inspect the deck. I'm supposed to be able to like name them all, but you know, Ray huh. Just uh, you got. And of course, the method man. Okay, so you know that. <laughs> you know Cream, the name of the man. song. Cash rules okay. everything around me. Cream gets. All right, out. you're two for two. Um, on the crime side, the New York Times side. Those, Stand those, alive is no job. Those are pretty easy. All right, Reed, I'm gonna do one. I'm gonna do one from an artist who's around our age. Okay, okay. I gave you a hint. I shouldn't have did that. Here we go. <laughs> Let the beat build. Who sings that? Let the beat build. Lil Wayne, Carter All right. Okay. Kanye you, produced it. You even got the album and the producer. Okay, so <laughs> Reed, you covered about 15, 20 years there of music. I don't know if Kiss Today could probably go back five years, but either way. All right, um, there we go. What you got for me, Malcolm? All right, so I'm gonna be way I'm gonna be way harder on you, I think. You okay. Know, I'm gonna see what that uh, Mississippi private school education, you know, got you as far as your American history goes. Okay. You know, All right. For the night. So, so Trey challenging me to what I know about, you know, black music. You know, hip hop obviously is the most popular version of that, but we we didn't done it all. You know, you know, we didn't done it all. That's well, that's hip hop what is we something do. that that we yeah. had in common. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. Hip hop, hip hop brought us together for sure, no doubt. Okay. All right. So, my thing is, Trey, I'm gonna ask you some questions about uh, some white guys who. Okay. You know. <laughs> some random white guys. Not really random. Just kind of some guys who. Can I get a category? Can I get a category hint? Before All right. We get going? Category hint. Or what do we? You know. What are we? What are we? What are we doing here? What, what are these questions? It's like it's like you know I'm a civics teacher, so uh, okay. you know just like a civics lesson. All right, so three uh, U.S. Questions. history, U.S. history. Three questions. Three questions. All right. All right. The first question is: Tell me the like most famous white abolitionist, like the person who was trying to help get the slaves free. He had a newspaper. It was called the Liberator. He was good friends with Frederick Douglass. Now I gave you a lot of information. You know, shout out to Frederick Douglass. That my my dad is named Frederick Douglass. Okay, so Reed, by the way, the we question is who, what historical white man mm -hmm. was the most this? famous abolitionist, most famous male white abolitionist. Mm. Mm. Newspaper was founded around eighteen thirty. I, I'm not using Google, ladies and gentlemen. By Are we Abraham Lincoln? Abolitionist, bro. Are oh, you got me? What I mean, he you? did about. I mean, he like you know, he didn't abolish slavery really. He wrote the Emancipation Proclamation, but that's not the abolishment of it. That came with Thirteenth Amendment. Okay, uh, so who, who who are we talking about? We talking about William Lloyd Garrison, bro. William Lloyd Garrison. Okay, mm -hmm. white man. I, 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 went to his, I saw his church or, or the church in Boston that he made his first speech. 
That was awesome. All right, you ready for the next one? Yeah, I'm up for one. All right, what's the second one? <laughs> All right, this white guy uh, led uh, like a, what do you call it? I, I don't want to say a revolution, but like a, hmm, I don't have the word, but he led like a charge against the U.S. Um, armory. Like he led a charge on the armory to like go take all the guns so he could like go help free all the slaves. So this is the same same time period type. Same again? time period. Yep. He's you can call him an abolitionist for sure, but he like literally like they killed him and everything. Like he took his sons. So what's know, the question like, here? The question is who is he? What's his name? We're not talking about the same same dude, are we? No, it's not William Lloyd Garrison. William Lloyd Garrison was a writer and more so, of a speaker. This dude, like, literally, it's like, hey, man, let's go get all the guns that the, that the United States has, and we're going to start a war and get all the slaves free. I don't know. I don't know who that is. Oh, wait. Well, look, I'm going to be honest. I didn't know who he was until I learned on my own. But okay. his name is John Brown. So have you ever, you used to watch Living and Come? Of course. Of course. Jim Carrey, of course. That's another good. I was like, a Tommy, I right was here. a, I was a Tommy Davidson fan because he's from Mississippi. That's right. Know. He from Greenville? I think, I don't know. He's from somewhere from the Delta. He's on, the, All on right. the Delta, so that's what's up. All right. All right. So third, third question. Third question. Straightforward. Name the four presidents that have been assassinated. All right. <clears throat> you should know Ab at least two. Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. John F. Kennedy. Yep. Um, I know that uh, Ronald Reagan, there was an attempt on Ronald Reagan. He was actually shot. Yeah, he was. But he didn't die. So is Gerald Ford. Um, the other president that was assassinated. Two more. Um, I don't, I know one of them, I know one of them was white. <laughs> and uh, I want to say he was only in office for a, a year which in turn led to another president having to serve <clears throat> the rest of his term, um, I believe. But I couldn't, I, I, so. could, I couldn't tell you the name of either of those other two that were assassinated. All right. So one of them is named after, uh, he's named, you, you know, the, the cat, the um, famous cartoon cat from the comics. comics Tom? One. No. Tom and Jerry? Tell no, the, the orange one. Garfield. Garfield. William Garfield. Okay. <laughs> so Garfield. I, I didn't know he was he was assassinated. Okay. Yeah. Who's the other one? And William McKinley. Not William Garfield. It's James Garfield and William McKinley, who McKinley High is named after. That's why I wanted to ask that question. Mm, Shout out to okay. the Garfield. All right, well, we good. <laughs> anyway, so you did very well. I didn't do well in my history lesson. Um, I, I mean, we, we can't make it easy on each other. Yeah. All right. So in the past week. Um, you sent me a link to Dave Chappelle's new, um, I guess, public service announcement, I guess yeah, is what you, you could call, call it. it. It's called a special. There was it's no Netflix was, special, you know. There's really no comedy, know. but, uh, what was the Early. video? The video wasn't very long. It was like 20 minutes, possibly 20, 27, 27 yeah. maybe a half, uh, but, um, but anyway. Shorter than the, the usual ones. Right. But, um, you know, if you look on Netflix, he's the most um, searched. Anyway, he was just kind of talking about today's issues. But he, in the video you sent me, um, I learned about Chris Dorner, mm -hmm. the former police officer who witnessed a fellow officer committing what he considered to be acts of, you know, injustice. He reported his fellow police officer, who was a female um, and nothing was ever done about it. He was even mm. eventually let go. Right. Um, and, um, you know, I guess time went by and he, he, he had felt betrayed by, you know, the police officers. So he ended up killing a lot of police officers and, um, killed a lot of police officers. Like went yeah, what after was the exact number. I didn't even, I didn't get that. But he, he, he went after a lot of police officers and, um, in response, when they finally found him, uh, Dave Chappelle talked about how there was a hundred police officers that showed up on scene because they wanted to kill the guy or get the guy that killed some of their own. 
So that's, he right. was kind of, he was kind of relating that to, you know, when you, when you hurt someone who's our own, like he was referring to police officers that were killing their own people in terms of police officers, not color, but police officers, like you kill them one of our own, which is fellow officer. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was very real to him. <clears throat> and he was kind of relating that to the, uh, the riots, the yeah. protests. People are mad, you know, like they saw, they saw one of their own get killed. Me and me and one of their own, like black people. Yeah, for sure. Like that's what, so, that's what I, we see. That's what we see all the time, bro. You know, and I thought, uh, Dave Chappelle was anyway, brilliant. You know, you know, it's was it's sad that we didn't go get to go see him. Um, yeah, we were actually Joe Rogan. <laughs> we we you and myself were we had plans to go see Joe Rogan and Dave Chappelle in New Orleans um, at right. the Smoothie King Center, but all of the COVID hit because I think we were supposed to go in March, like maybe March, April. I think it was March or March or April. I can't remember exactly, but man, either way, I was so looking that, forward to that. So yeah, I, I learned a, I learned a lot about Chris Dorner um, just from watching that little Dave Chappelle special, and it was like I don't you know he he spoke, he spoke a lot about um, the the young black lady uh, Candace uh, uh, Candace Owens is that her name? Oh Lord, yeah. Like um, <laughs> you know, I mean I I don't. <laughs> she seems intelligent, but it, it seems to be like um, uh, you know a lot of white people are kind of um, pushing her out there. It's kind of like... Like white people pushing her out there. Like yeah. That's, that's, yeah. yeah. Oh, bro. But, but, but black people, black people aren't. And then again, it becomes a division of race based upon one person's comments and feelings. And that don't make sense. But um, if you want to expand some more about the, you know, the Chris Dorner thing and just kind of... I mean, I... I mean, he it talked was, about that. So I remember Chris Dorner. Like, I knew about that already. Like, I remember what happened. I, I actually read the manifesto, but I don't, like, remember everything that was in it. I know it was, like, he said so many different things about, you know, just how he thought about how everything was corrupt, and he just wasn't going to stand for it. And, you know, he it, it, it took him there. It took him to a place where he didn't feel it was worth even – you know, it was all fake to him. So it was like, it don't even matter what I do. So he went and did what he did. And, you know, I don't support that at all. But, you know, it's things like that happen. You know, just like when people are treated in the wrong way. And he, you know, connected. What Dave Chappelle did was connect him to, like, other Black people who had done the kill police officers, basically. And the thing that the common denominator with, with all three of the ones that he mentioned were all military guys. Ex-military uh, guys? Ex-military guys, yeah. So I mean we, we go back with that. Like well, we go what back is to that. We we go back to what we talked about with um World War Two, fighting for the same freedoms but not coming back to them. Right. You know what I'm saying? And people so, always, people was trying to say like what like Drew Brees, you know, he spoke on his his grandfathers and envisioning them, and we didn't even mention last week when we talked about that that our grandfathers were also uh, you know, right. middle World War Two vets. Mm -hmm. you know, and but Chris Dorner was a former military guy. Yeah, for sure. Um, and it's just one of those things where it, it that's with anything. It could be. We could be playing, and I, I'm, I don't want to relate like life and death, but you and I, okay, we could be playing football. And if I get in a fight during a game or someone cheap shots me, my teammates, whether they're black, white, or whatever, are going to come to my aid immediately. I'm right? coming. Right? I'm coming. I don't care about that. So it's not like, people, it's not like someone says, you know what, that's a white guy. I'm not really going to do that, but that's like, he's, you're one of our own, you're a teammate, right? Right. So it's, I guess it's hard for a lot of people to comprehend that, that. Man, that, that's, 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 but, but, that's a but great it, analogy. Cause it's like this, you but see it happens. That people, it happens, who could, people who have connections to each other don't, don't ride for each other. And black people in America have like, we've had to have, like, we've had to stick together in certain ways because it's like, you never know what could happen to you, clearly. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you look at, 
you, you go somewhere, you see other black people, you're going to stick together with them. And it's the same thing for white people. It's the same thing for any other. You see people who have the same, who look the same as you. You feel more comfortable around them. That's just natural human instinct. Is it though? Is it? It's Are because, you sure? Because I don't I, know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Really. Well, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, people who have the same culture and cultural background more so. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when we see, when an African American person sees another one, or a black person in the, in, on the globe, it's like, do we have the same connection because of the history of the world and the stories that go with it? And okay. that's what, you know, that will, that's what connects us, our history and, our, and the experience of being black in, on this earth. Today. So and there's and yeah, there's nothing there's wrong a, with other people having the same feelings. It's like well, there's natural. there's there's fewer of black people, so y'all maybe feel a closer connection. There's so many white people that you know maybe there's there's a lot more divisions within the own race. But um, yeah, specifically in with, America, you know, well, where we where we only make up thirteen percent of the population. So yeah, but, you know, but obviously, the, but um, the, you know, globally, the, is much larger numbers than that the the chris dorner case so like i get it i get was messed up and what he did and whatnot he shouldn't i don't agree with it but um and then you know you mentioned the um rayshard um davis rayshard brooks rayshard brooks uh incident in atlanta which you know people are outraged about that reed why is it i mean this is happening to white people black people why does the media more so just push the black stuff out? <laughs> Am I wrong, Reed? I think so. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. I think you you ain't watching and you don't watch it enough. But no, right. but and that's not the wrong. Honestly, the media is like you gotta really kind of read have you heard everything have, out. Have you heard that the, the have you heard have you heard they cancel cops and they cancel live PD? Yeah. Okay. So they're trying to take away <laughs> what the what the public sees is good sides of the police because that's documented that's live so Ain't no good side of the police in the black communities bro but when you're watching not, not people, publicly i'm sorry when, let me I, time out time out that's the image that we have of the police is not a positive one but that how doesn't many, end that how there many, are not many positive interactions with police in the community. right but I'm just so saying. Don't give me. You know, I, I may. I want to be clear on that. <laughs> that there are more. Me personally, have had way more positive experiences than negative experience with the police. Right. I'm just saying from from a media driven perspective. Why is it that? Well, what's being pushed to the youth this and is the why. society is is always. Hey, man police doing this to black people yeah they are doing it but they're also doing it to white people too and i just i i don't want to be i don't like either side honestly i don't like either side i don't i don't like how if you um, just don't like hearing about it at all i don't that's like you, okay if you, here's you what don't I'm really watch the news so that's probably no i don't watch the news but here's what i'm saying so i see a story posted right about um <laughs> you know uh someone died right Black person dying from police. You hear me, Reed? You stay with you with me? Um, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm, I was okay. looking at some okay. comments. My bad. Right, so no, Run that so back. Run that back. Say that again. Right. So, um, something happens, and okay, Rayshard Brooks gets killed. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm watching the tape. I'm thinking, man, this looks pretty justified to me, given he was drunk driver. Which one? The Rayshard Brooks one. All right, look, we can we can we can we can do George Floyd too. I'm just saying an example. Someone may post something about one of those people, right? A black person, mm-hmm. right? And then a white person will comment, "Well, what about so and so's life? It doesn't matter." You know what I mean? Like you ever see them talking about? Oh, yeah. It's always it's always Everybody. like, "What about this person? Well, what about this person? This person?" There are how many people in this world, and and with and with the connections to social media millions and millions of people have access and and ways to put news out and videos so it's not like i mean the media just picks and chooses there's millions of things to choose from it's just it's they cool. always tend to focus on the negative ones but um anyway let, that, let, let me help you out let me help you out because okay. you right. i mean i understand why you don't really see it the same way you know what i'm saying like i get it but 
when you always see black people being killed on the videos that's the ones they put out there yeah right? because but they're unarmed people it's not like like not saying that white people don't get killed by the police but not at the same rate or in the same fashions like so since this Rashard Brooks come out you you said that um you know you you saw him pull out the taser and he to start running yeah. away right yeah he was shooting but, shooting at the okay they got like all these other stories popping up. I've seen at least two about white dudes who uh, took that that shot the tires at the police, and they still didn't get shot with a gun. Yeah, I've seen. I'll see like, someone post don't a have, video. You, you I'll didn't s- have to kill the guy. I get it, but that goes back to what we talked about: better training for police officers and better preparation, and and that's something that's needs to be addressed. Trey, do you think they would have shot the guy and killed him if he was white? Rayshard Brooks. If Rayshard Brooks was Trey Butts, would you be dead? Um, If I pulled a taser out, shot it at one officer, and then proceeded to shoot it at another, and I was in in an intoxicated state, I would would expect for them to do what they had to do. Because the tasers are there for what? Are you serious? You think that they would shoot you? These white dudes, bro. And you're a white guy. Mm-hmm. If they were going to, you I mean if they if you was doing the same thing, behaving the same okay. way, okay, okay, here here we go. Let you go. Here we go, Reed. Let me let me. He might have let he might have let me here, go. Here here we go, Reed. Go let me. Re- Dave Chappelle. No no no. Let, let me tell go you ahead. right now, Reed. Here's what would have happened. First off, I wouldn't have been passed out drunk in a drive-through. They try to make a story like he was going to pick up his daughter and stuff. Come on, man. He's passed out drunk in a drive-thru. Secondly, if it does come to that, I'm saying, yes, sir. I'm getting handcuffed, and I'm and I'm thinking about, you know, my, the decisions that brought me to that point. I'm not thinking, can I escape and run? You're not thinking that. <laughs> but – he was he was ahead, intoxicated. Going, going. I'm sorry. I'm just saying he was in he was in. What does he really think is the outcome there? Does he think right. that? Does he think that he's gonna die if he says yes, sir, and they handcuff him? Because before he resisted, they didn't do one single thing that was, you know, against the the the, the handbook. I guess to say, you know what I mean? It, it wasn't was until the, the, he started resisting. The exchange before he they put him in handcuffs was. Totally cool on both sides. Mm-hmm. How many people have passed out drunk in a Wendy's drive through and just woke up and went home with no, I mean, like, I'm, I, don't, I'm, I don't, I don't know if there's that many people. This dude was in line though. It, he was bro, in line. bro, it, was, it, it happens. Come on now. Come on. Now. Let's keep it real. No, Let's it, keep wasn't, it, real. it was during <laughs> operating hours. If I'm a dude, it's later, it's the middle of the night. And he pulls in and he's passed out. Drunk. I'm like, hey, come on, man. I'm trying to get some food. I'll be honking the horn, go around and whatever. But for some- is that uh, is that an offense that is what did he do that he should have died for? Like he didn't none, none of the things that he did. He never came off as a person who was aggressive or violent until he, he did grab the thing and try to escape. He was fleeing, though. Thing. Black people have a paranoia with the police. That's what this goes back to. I understand that. We understand. he was trying. It's fight or flight, like because George, this, you just saw what happened to George Floyd. He made one false move, and now they knee on his neck. I, I get For it. Eight minutes and forty six seconds. <laughs> I get it. Chappelle voice. So well, let's another let's, point. There's another point that Dave Chappelle made about how. Uh, what was it? See, I should have I should have had that written down. But it's something something that you said that we, we go back to Dave Chappelle, uh, how we he was talking about how he just, just he, he was saying he, he I about, think I, I lost it. Damn no, it. He he was talking about empathy too. Like he could he could he talked about empathy because he, you know, when he said he was he knew he was gonna die because he was at, or calling out or whatever, you know what I mean? But yeah, like bro. The man who's Derek Chauvin, or however you pronounce his name, sat on that man's neck all that time, and he didn't. He wasn't even worried about it. Like it was just like I'm just do this. I ain't, I don't care what happens to him. Like 
he's sitting there calling for his mama. He dying. You know what I'm saying? Like he said, I, I you know, I said, I lied. I'm through. He, I'm through. Yeah. Like, can you just get off the man? Okay. Can read. you just get off of him, bro? I, I get that. Let's. I want to talk about this Rayshard Brooks thing real quick. Okay. Because I just thought of something. All right. So, you know as well as I do, if someone is really drunk and they're driving, they are putting a lot of people's lives at risk. Would no you agree with that? It. No okay. doubt about it. That could have been my my family. Anybody, bro. Your, it's the your worst. Your family that's affected by a drunk driver, right? It's the right? worst. No okay. excuse. No so, excuse. No excuse. 100%. Okay. 100%. I'm, so I, I don't think I don't think anyone deserves to die for a drunk driving, you know. Period. I I don't think it's anyone's right to um, kill someone unless they think that they're trying to protect the you know protect their own life. So in mm -hmm. that sense, the police officer had to have felt threatened for his life when the guy was shooting a taser at him. Bro. That's the only, that's the only thing that I could come and maybe he was trying you know but shoot him in the leg or something come they need better training um <laughs> r r real quick I wanted to say uh um, didn't have to die bro no he, he didn't, didn't have, have to, to die, die. He didn't have to die. like it's so many so many different situations and what I really just feel like that you know what we go through and what we have to tell our kids and what you know what had to be told to us about like you could do everything right and still die you know what i'm saying and not saying that um even yeah i know he, I'm not saying that any of these guys and nobody's perfect nobody's perfect nobody does everything the right way because they're just people of, yeah we're people no you know how that goes but i know man so people, many different times that, that people have been shot pulling out their wallet you know uh, and you know there's there's a so many different things. But read that. I mean, I could mean People, you can honestly say Eric Garner. You know, we, that was another one. That could and, honestly, then you, and then you look at just look, just look at uh all the other times that like historically, this ain't just just starting. You know what I'm saying? Like Rayshard Brooks is just a part of a 400 year history, bro. You know and maybe what I'm and like, maybe that's why it's like trauma that the paranoia and all that like man we didn't been through so much but i get it read but the media still that's what they're feeding that the one percent you know what i'm saying the one percent of the the negativity that is so dividing that's what they keep feeding i feel you it it, it is uh, that's, that's why i, I don't it gets, I don't watch it, it gets overwhelming it does and I, it's like dave chappelle said this he was like i ain't even watched the video at first and i man george floyd video was the first one i had watched in a long time Mm -hmm. Like I, I kind of like caught the the Amal Arbor weeks late, and that's that one kind of hard to see. But those guys were clearly uh, have a racist history from everything that I've read, and um, reacted well, to that that way because of the way they think. And you know, well, they weren't. Again, that, that goes back to being comfort and knowing how to communicate with someone who doesn't look like you, and, right. and how to approach. You know, some situations, like you said, are, are out of hand, but others, and, and let's be honest, Reed, if, if uh, I think police officers are trained to treat every situation as if that person could essentially be trying to take your life, because the moment you, you're not thinking that is when police officers could lose their life. So there, there's, there's some gray area there to me, you know what I mean? But look, um, Ch Chappelle had mentioned also towards the end about Dylan Roof, and that was something mm -hmm. that you and I had spoken out a, a lot about. And then uh, when I heard the Dylan Roof, I thought, well, I need to send Reed something. He sent me the Chappelle. I need to send him something. So I sent you, I sent you an old song um, by Yellow Wolf, who is a white rapper from Gaston, Alabama. And um, uh, he's around our age. I think he's about late 30s, maybe. He's he's a few years older than us. But um, anyway, he... he is he? Uh, yeah, yeah he's about late thirties. Uh, he did a song called uh, "To Whom It May Concern." He late thirties. <laughs> it was uh, early, we mid. I'm mid thirties, dog. Mid. -30s. <laughs> oh, I guess you can't say we still mid, huh? Um, but it was inspired from his friend, who is also um, a black black uh, musician from Miss Meridian, Mississippi, uh, Big Crit. So 
uh, I found that very telling that they had a really close relationship and um, you listened to the song. It was, it, you know, it kind of talked about racial injustices and, and ultimately he kind of talked about like his upbringing as a white kid in the South who really, in, like white kid from the country, you know what I mean? <laughs> who, who, who really, who really enjoyed like rap music, like, um, and you know, Mississippi, there's a lot of people that can relate. You might see a kid, you might see a 16 year old white kid with a jacked up Z71 with big, huge mud tires on it. You know, he's got a cowboy hat on, um, he's dipping skull. Um, you know, he wears cowboy boots and he's got a thick Southern draw accent. But the only music he's got going through his 212s is, you know, uh, nothing but hardcore rap, you know what I mean? Or, or something of that nature. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, the song just kind of talked about that, like white kids growing up that were like ingrained in black culture, but didn't know any better, di didn't, didn't think like um, this is a black culture thing, just more or less like, I guess people who were- It's, Amer it's American culture. Yeah, it's, it is, Which but- means it's ours. <laughs> right, it's both of ours, right? Like, it's supposed to be, but you know what I'm saying? And but, it is, it is, but you know what I mean? But he talked about how he felt like he wasn't accepted by certain white people because he liked certain things about black culture, but then parts of the black people didn't accept him either because he was a white guy trying to do, trying to <laughs> rap and do what, you know, a black person does. But read. <laughs> I got to laugh right quick. Yeah. So oh, go, no, ahead, I, go ahead. I, 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 Tell, tell them about tell them about the story and the and, and, and the song or whatever. What? Noah Noah said, "Did you? I'm sorry." He said, "Uh, did you just stereotype the Southern youth?" <laughs> and you kind of did, but it's you know stereotypes are based on facts. No, 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 no. I'm, anyway, yeah, it's no, no, all good. No, 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 I'm I'm just giving an example so, of you know just because you're no no matter your background, you could like anything. You know what I mean? You so, could be you could be exposed to anything. It's whatever whatever. Whatever makes you feel alive and good, you're gonna, you know. Yeah, for sure. So, you. so look here. Uh, here goes. You know, obviously, we both agree, and we kind of was the person who one one of the people who we listen to a lot is Eminem. You know, mm -hmm. one of one of both our favorite rappers, and a, you know, a lot of people's favorite rapper. Right. So, uh, you know, he is pretty much the the standard bar for for white rappers, right? Eminem is, is the top and then you got everybody else so you know Yellow Wolf obviously worked with Eminem and you always used to be trying to put me on him and I'll be you know I'll listen to the songs you would send to me and, and he not so, whack he not so, whack at all but he just not my you know it ain't really my cup of tea I can't get down with it but I will understand how you could, but you but know, he talks about some real things but he talks about some real things in this song right? oh and this song is is different I like the song I do it's like he he showed his skills as a rapper and as a storyteller and as you know he painted some pictures of, mm -hmm. of his experience growing up but let's just let's just be real and cut to the chase like the dude was kind of raised in this racism you know what i'm saying like in a as a person who is in a poor, position poor who, white kid you know, from yeah like who has advantages because of his whiteness not so much his you know, quality as a person. You know but did, I mean? He can get away with stuff. It, you're saying he, he had advantages? I mean, he was a poor white kid. With, privileges, with that, for sure. You know, no no father. He was raised just by his mother. That's yes, right. right. Poverty. Impoverished. Poverty, yeah. Impoverished. Now, I'm mm -hmm. not, and I'm not going to, like, take that away from him. Like, that, not, that's not like that's something that he would want to have anyway. But, uh, you know, that doesn't take away the privileges of whiteness. Okay. <laughs> Poverty does not diminish whiteness. So it well, doesn't. What you're talking Just about not in so, America, at least. So some of his fame, some of his fame was, you know, some of the issues he addressed in the song were like about the Dixie flag, right? Right. And how he, <laughs> even though it meant something to him, it meant something to him. It, it means right. a lot of things to a lot of people. But 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 he eventually, you know uh like he's got mixed kids 
He's yeah. got mixed kids, but was one, but was also a uh, someone who supported the Dixie flag, like he in terms of the Dixie flag, representing it. But he, but mentally, but mentally, he wasn't in that that mindset to, I guess, know the other side of it. Or at least he thought. I, would, I wouldn't say that. I would say consciously he wasn't in that mindset. Mentally, it's deeply ingrained. So for those who, you know, I look at who not, you know, who don't, who have kind of broken those mental chains or actually never was kind of raised like that for real. But mm -hmm. it's not even, even if you're not raised in it purposely with, in, with inside your household, the media and the pictures that are painted, you know, which you talked about earlier, you know, like it gives you a different vibe. And also with the education and the system of that, like different things that you're going to learn growing up about being a white person, about being a black person, about being any kind of person in America. Where do you fit in? How does your story begin? And, you know, how does it work for you? And uh, he was, you know, Yellow Wolf kind of has that. But the, the song talks about, you know, his experiences growing up and the music that he listened to and how he was influenced by, by black culture. He talked about dancing in the living room with uh, the broom trying to be Michael Jackson. Like my kids doing that right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like dancing around. And when you see Michael Jackson, he's a great entertainer. You know, what I'm the music is great. That's not deniable. Like music definitely is something that brings people together more than it divides them in any way. So uh, Yellow Wolf, I consider him a talented artist. You know what I'm saying? I do. I can't make the music. I mean, I, if I try harder, probably, maybe, you know, but he has talent for making music. And that song, you know, Who's Doing Me Making Concern is one that uh, shows that. But there's some people that feel because of the amount of white rappers, it diminishes, you know, the sanctity of hip hop and rap. Like it's, but in a way, isn't that, isn't the fact that there are more white rappers that it's indeed connecting us more racially. <laughs> That's a good point right there. No, no doubt about it. Like it's weird in that way. But the thing about it is it's like, I was listening to, uh, so as, as you sent me that song, I started listening to kind of like some stories about Yellow Wolf. And I, I, I thought he made that song when he was talking to Royce the Five Nine because I know they had their little beef, but that was about something mm -hmm. completely different. But he wrote the song, The Big Crit. So I really, you know, I ain't, by the time I listened to it, I hadn't even really got a chance to go back and see I think it. I think it was written to, it was written to anybody, but he was just, he it was saying that it was, it was inspired by his conversation Crit, with yeah. one of his really good black friends who was like, look, man, the perception about you is all wrong. You know, people don't know you like I do. And that's, that's the thing. There's like, as the media, they can put a perception on anyone, Malcolm anyone they can paint a picture you know what i mean and um i think that as a society we focus too much on that that negative stuff but um yeah it's uh this is, this is the thing though but you got to focus on problems to fix them you know what i'm saying you no, don't no, no. like dwell on them but you do have to recognize them and be aware that they exist and if, you're not, if you if you don't then they just gonna keep going on that's like i said before the cameras came on and everybody started seeing these people getting murdered in the middle of the street in broad daylight for not without a gun on them you know now people see it you know we saw Rodney King first but you know that was 30 years ago and you you've, how many have we seen since mm -hmm. you know Trayvon Martin we didn't see that one but you know this this not this dude not even a cop George Zimmerman he not even a police officer and he run up on somebody and they let him, and they let him go and he's just walking around the streets free you know kill the kid a kid, he's a grown man. He's the same age as us, exact, you know, to be exact. So what what taught what taught George Zimmerman to hate black people? Because he clearly been he talked noise to us like <laughs> and everything. I don't, like, I don't know. I don't know. I guess it's just it goes back to more of a um a change that has to happen systematically within the judicial system. You know, I mean if 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 certain things, you know. I know we, they keep having protests and riots, but, and you're saying like, we keep saying, crying out for the same thing, but you know, if, if, something, if nothing doesn't change from it, like it should have been, we saw the video, this happened, you know, within the day, 
the Minneapolis police should have been like, these four cops are being held, have been arrested, relieved of their duties, you know, come off right, 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 right off the bat. You know what I mean? No doubt. And, and that would have probably solved a lot of the, you know, turmoil should, in the streets. Well, there, there should be some law judicially. Hey, here's all the evidence we have right here. You know, listen, we, we have enough to convict them at least. You still have to go to court and do all the law, but you know what? We got enough yeah, evidence right here. Innocent you know? to proven guilty, right? Mm-hmm. That's what they're supposed to say, but that's uh, that's really not in the case. And then uh, you just look at some, in most cases, what happens to the cop when they kill somebody? They get administrative leave and they get paid to sit at the house and do nothing mm-hmm. after they mm-hmm. just killed somebody who didn't really deserve to die. Well, you know because if, if, but, if, we're go- if we're going on in this innocent till proven guilty, so it has to be that way, just, you know, for liability reasons and whatnot, but. Um, yeah, but then then you have turmoil in the streets because if. Yeah, there's outrage. I get it. I go kill somebody who I might have been in self-defense. I got to go to jail and I got to prove myself that I got, you know what I'm saying, nine times out of ten. The, the average citizen in general, and that, and, and that don't really have to do it, but it's just police. Get mm-hmm. to just chill, you know what I'm saying, and just I'm gonna just sit back and wait for to what happened. And I got you know all these people backing me. I got the city behind me, you know. I'll probably be all right, you know. And a lot and a lot of times people start GoFundMe. They started GoFundMe for George Zimmerman. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, bro. You killed this little kid, and they gonna they gonna you gonna people gonna just donate money to you. You kill a little black kid, you start a GoFundMe. <laughs> people gonna really donate to it. You know what I'm saying? Like this man raised like, when I last I saw it, it was like $300,000 that George Zimmerman got, which which is a similar number to the 33% of votes that David Duke got for the Louisiana gubernatorial seat. Well, no, I mean, I, I, I mean, I know stories like that, but it just, it always seems to come back to the point of the system in place to, you know, convict someone like George Zimmerman it was uh it was backwards from the beginning you know yeah well you're right but the backwards part of it usually well, black people end up on the short end of the stick it i mean well i, I it just the, don't work the, out the, like that it, the it, main, it's wrong i i know that you agree that it's wrong but i just think that you don't see, you don't really get that you don't have to see that you know what i'm saying you don't have to connect to it if if you don't so choose, but you, you feel me on that though. I know you do. No, I mean, I understand. Like I said, it's, um, when you see, when you see someone who looks like you die on a video from police officers, the next time you get pulled over and you're by yourself and it's dark and you know, it's two white police officers and you're just a black kid and you may have only been speeding, but you still get a little nervous, man. (laughs) Terrified for your life. But Reed, you know what? Those two police officers, depending on who they are, their upbringing, and their communication skills, they could also be terrified for their life. They could be in a situation like, they are, right, you are 100% correct. You know, they, they're like, all right, man, I'm freaking out. There's this black dude. I don't know him. You know, we got, we got to be ready. You know, we got to be ready. <laughs> Straight but, up, that's that's it. That's exactly right. There's certain ways of they got okay. the power though, you know. Here's the thing: the best police videos I see, like at night, is when police officers will never approach the car. Right? Swing open the doors. They got the megaphone on the light. Driver, you know, drop your keys out. Yeah. Whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> like those, those are the ones who are super super scared. Driver, come back with your hands. You know what I mean? Will detain right, with you. the gun with the gun drawn as soon as right. they uh right I've I've seen that on live PD or cops, right? Mm-hmm. But, but um bad just, boys, bad boys. But for just None a speed, you. but for just a speed and ticket, they're gonna approach the window. They're gonna ask you for your license and registration. Every time. Right? That's what they're supposed to do. That's what they're supposed to do. So you know. It don't have to always be a bad situation. Like I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be 100 percent honest. Like you know this already. Like where I used to drive, when I would ride up, up back and forth to Valley, mm-hmm. I would always, I learned to always wear my, uh, my Valley stuff. You know, my Valley gear. So when they, when they, if they pull me over and they see, oh, you play ball for Valley, 
Hey man, just slow down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's that's my point. I gotta say this right quick. So Dave Chappelle talked about, we was just talking about, you know, who might get pulled over, who might get profiled. Yeah, I might get profiled, but if they find out that I'm someone who they think is a good person, then they'll let me go too. You don't have to be yeah, that person out. to yeah. always get let go. And Dave Chappelle said that he got pulled over by the same cop who killed this guy at Walmart. I forget this guy's name, but Dave, Dave Chappelle was pulled over by a cop. The cop noticed it was Dave Chappelle. He let him go with a warning. That same cop the next day goes into Walmart and like kills a guy who had didn't even have a gun on him. And he was just there to get something for his daughter. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And he got lost in the shuffle though, because they they like the people went out, they protested. They didn't really burn the city down or nothing like that, but they was out there marching and angry and pissed off and trying but then, to but then somebody get something else to happen because the cop didn't get arrested. Something else, but something else in the media got pushed to the forefront, like a the Alton, next one Alton Sterling or something. Now George Floyd. We ain't forgot about George Floyd, but Rayshard Brooks is the topic now. You know, I know what I'm saying? And they, that, they did burn that Wendy's down too. I wanted to bring that up. That's, that's but wild. that's what that's what the media does so that's well. They take your attention from here to there. You know what I'm saying? They do. So they do. And um, social media takes you from some mm, different places too. Mm, you know what I'm saying? As you scrolling down your timeline, you're gonna see this article and that video and you know this post about whatever it is, and you just like all over the place. But once once something happens that we are if it's a big game on, everybody's following, you know, everybody's live tweet, everybody's live, you know, if it's, Facebook status. If that's it's the it's NBA lit. finals. Oh, it's lit. Which, 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 should, lit. Which, which should be coming up pretty soon if this was a normal year or, in my case, like, you know, English. They talking about not playing. That's a whole other story well, with Kyrie Irving and well, you know, some other guys. Like, I'm, we need I'm to just keep focused on this. Well, I'm just but saying for that reason. My I'm just saying played. from a from a from a general media standpoint, there's so much bad going on in the world that man, it's just all compressed to the front. Back when back when coronavirus cases were first hit in the US, Kobe Bryant had died. He was getting all the, the, the press. People didn't see what was happening over here. You know what I'm saying? So it's like Kobe. But I'm just saying <laughs> you know, like we we don't have sports, which is a huge huge thing that people we don't have Kobe turn to on the media. <laughs> Think about it. There's not a lot of new music coming out right now. There's not a lot of new movies coming out right now. TV shows, everything's been getting put on hiatuses, you know. So, of course, this negative stuff that's been happening with police officers and oh, man, killings of like, black people that's that's been pushed to the forefront. We don't have an escape. You know what I mean? There's no mm -hmm. there's no game seven of the NBA finals we right. can watch. It, but, um, the things you mentioned with sports and music, the things that unite us the most. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We got an election coming up. Yeah. Hey, you know what before, I'm saying? Before Nothing divides us more than the election years. Before you start talking about the election, um, we need to go ahead and try to get to some of your favorite questions before we get off here. Um, We'll get off here in about maybe less than ten minutes, John Reed. So if you got some, see some questions you wanna you wanna put oh, out there for the people. All right, let me see. You can look for some too, cause I ain't really uh been looking to be honest. All right. I almost stopped the stream. I almost blew it. What did I do? Keep your volume down, brother. All right, what we got? So All right. Some... Let me see. They got some. Oh, you got some questions on here for you. <laughs> All right. I don't really right. see any though. We didn't. We didn't really give a, a precursor about a Q and A period. So, <clears throat> if y'all watching on Facebook Live and you got a question for us, then uh, then you could let us know. My cousin out there out in Cali say two young black men was found hanging on a tree in Cali in the last few days. That ain't even that ain't even talked about in the, the mainstream. Everybody talking about Rashad Brooks and Brooks and George Shaw and so many other people get lost in the show. I ain't I ain't really even going in on how Dave Chappelle talked about Alton Sterling and what happened right here in Baton Rouge. You know what I'm saying? But that that happened like right around the corner from where I grew up on North on North Foster. And uh, Fairfield, so like, I'm from I'm from Howard Park, Howard Park Avenue. So like, that's right around the corner, basically, 
Elm Street, Winburn, Foster, you there. It's like my cool. grandmother was was right there. So like, this is a place that I seen every day. Okay, let me let me let me give the you the whole world can't the CNN was was on Foster and Fairfield, man. <laughs> no, man, I get it. I'm just saying, like, read really, this stuff happens every day somewhere, man. A 77-year-old white deputy sheriff from Simpson County in Mississippi. He was transporting a prisoner, black prisoner. He overtook him, took his gun, shot and killed him. The 77-year-old sheriff's deputy was only still working to so take care of his <clears throat> to take care of his, his granddaughter uh, because his daughter had already passed away. Now I'm not and, and you'll see people posting his stuff. Like, why doesn't his life matter? It does matter. And then it becomes like a race war of, well, this white person got killed. Well, this black person got killed. And I, I, I don't like all that. I like, I see too much of that. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it becomes a competition of who do we honor more in this point? Like, and uh, it's not like they're, it's not like they're, you know, I guess, uh, I don't want to say use Candace Owens like talking about martyrs, but like people, bring it up in response to the other one you know what i mean as if yeah. it's a competition yeah, yeah, for real it, i hate that i be saying that all the time like well anytime somebody's just grieving or mourning a person they might not know the, like some mm -hmm. people's doing i'm gonna keep it real like celebrities in the past when a celebrity died and i would see people was like really hurt by it i'll be like well you know why are you tripping on that person you don't even know him. like it ain't no big deal mm, you know right. what i'm saying until kobe died and I cried, bro. Oh, bro. <laughs> I shouldn't it was laugh, bad. I couldn't cool. even be. It's cool because it's kind of funny to me, too, to be honest. Because I was like, damn, I'm really tripping. Like, first of all, I was hurt by it. But then I just couldn't believe that I was that hurt. <laughs> so I was tripping out, man. It messed me up, to be honest. Well, I mean, I'm I'm sad for whoever gets murdered, dies, of, of whatever. But, I mean, I still think that we have it really good in this country. There's a lot of bad things going on around the world, you know what I mean? And America, of course, gets put to the, the, the forefront of, you know, everything social and justice wise. But I just don't, I don't think that getting in a, a Facebook war over, you know, like the, the, the yeah, 77, the, the 77, really? the 77 year old that died, Malcolm, someone will screenshot the story with a few comments from some black people that say like, glad he's dead and stuff like that. And like, they post that and it goes viral. That's promoting the, the division. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Stop sharing that stuff. People <laughs> stop, stop, yeah. stop, stop being a part of that. That literally like, that people don't understand. Right? Fall back off that. These, these young kids don't understand. Someone could have created these accounts five seconds ago and and it could have been a white dude, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or it could have been trolls, anarchists. Just so people need to get off of social media. They need to get off of 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 these Facebooks, and they need to they need to go out go outside. You know what I mean? They need right. to they need to or play they some baseball. To, they need to figure <laughs> stuff out so socially. You know, talking on a computer screen is not going to help. You know, read people got to get out and go. By their I, actions, you know I like saying? how you said that while you are literally talking on a computer screen. <laughs> but I agree, you know, I'm we, we here, I'm here with you talking on the you, computer screen. You know what too. I mean? Like but just yeah, I got you. I'm just messing and, with you. <laughs> it's um, a little irony. Well, what 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 questions we got before we get off? Do we got anything? I don't really see people, none, people man. Let me start scrolling a little bit. Let's see. It's a question about people getting killed in the comfort of their own home, like uh Breonna Taylor was knocked out sleep and they the police kicked the door in and killed her. There's another dude, Botham Jean, I think, who a police officer went in the wrong house and shot the dude while okay. he was sleeping. Let's 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 let's, ad let's address that. I think let's she got off. Let's address that though, real quick, Malcolm, because I crazy. I know I know personally, I know personally, you've been inside your house as a young kid when police officers had come in your house and, and you survived. Right. Yeah. So there's instances where, like I said, man, it's just they're, they're human. Man, why? People, yeah. people make I, mistakes. They make error. errors. You know what I'm saying? I agree with that. I mean, we, we can, we can, we can go the, as far. When it's the police and a black person, it's just like, you know, yeah. it just it just it sparks something different in you when you see it happen. Like, I can't help myself 
but to just be like, dang, again? You know, like <laughs> Jay-Z said this. He said, it seems like the end of every young black life is this line. Damn, him already? Such a good soul. God is pouring in already. Dang. Meet the parents. I know you like that song. Yeah. I like that one. Yeah. Gift and the Curse. Gift and the Curse. Volume two. Um, well, I mean, I, I understand where you're coming from, but I mean, the majority of the people in the United States aren't affected by it really because right. they're not they're not around it. So straight up. You know, the um it, it always seems like the the majority is the silent, you know? Mm -hmm. It's the it's the, the silent majority that, that gets ignored, I guess. It's the it's the one percent of things that always gets exposed. And I know like you said, we have to expose the problem so we can fix them. Right. But for sure. I mean, listen, Reed, we're both we're both coaches. If I have a kid who during the game keeps making the same mistake over and over and over again. And, and we've worked on it in practice and we've tried to perfect it and we've tried to do right. And I've given him every opportunity. And finally the game comes where he's not starting no more. You and on we the bench, big dog. <laughs> so we have to make adjustments. We have to get to know our people. We have to do things that's, that's right. And um, we have to put the best people in the best positions, that's it. you know, to, to, to succeed. And that's, man, that's, that's, you, it's just, so I don't know. It's, you know, something with sometimes with police, <clears throat> with the police officers, it's just, man, are we putting them in the best situation to succeed? Are we, uh, I know they're getting opportunities, but you know, um, I guess, I guess that's what it boils down to. Is it, I mean, is it a, is it a police officer thing Bro, read or is this, it still, this, is, this it still is, is it still, I'm glad, you, I'm glad you made that point about coaching because what are coaches are leaders, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're a good coach, you know your personnel, you do your best to prepare them, and if they fail, you put them on a the bench. You take them off the game. Sometimes they got to get cut. Mm -hmm. So that's – and I'm not saying that we should not have people serving the community, protecting and serving the community. But the police, as we know them, have failed to do that overall. You know, as overall, they exist, as overall, they exist. For or black, just for, for black Americans, for black Americans, bro. If you just look at the history of it, so many different things have been put in place. I mean, you start off in literal chains of slavery, Jim Crow, uh, convict leasing, which was like people would make up all kind of laws. Like if you just didn't have a job, vagrancy, you would go to jail. And then once you go to jail, they like sell you to the highest bidder to go work for somebody, but you in jail. Be okay. committing a crime because the 13th amendment says it. slavery is abolished except in, unless you commit a crime like it literally says that so then they start making all things criminal that are black <laughs> literally you know we talk about you know sag people who they that's illegal in some places like if you get caught with like but rappers made it cool then everybody starts sagging and now uh, it's illegal you could blame some rappers for that basically you know what I'm saying? They are complicit in promoting that culture. If they now, when the laws come out to say stop sagging, the rappers need to, hey man, y'all need to, you might need to pull your pants up, or it's f the police. Which one? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like one or the other. No, but it just the it police create the police created NWA. It, they created it, that song. They're it, responsible for that music. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying in terms of the sagging thing, it it always results back to a you're just telling this because this is a black thing but there's black people who will say don't pull your pants up you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. i mean there's white kids that sag too there's, yep you're right there, there's hispanic kids who sag too it's, it's a but again rappers uh, made it cool for everybody it's like but, a yellow but, <laughs> but they'll but they'll they'll turn it into a ultimately a race issue you know yeah for sure um, it, it will get turned into that that's, but, you know, that's that's way it's so many different ways to look at it trey well um any, anything you want to uh comment people people comment which i got what you got for us so we can a lot of people are, are kind of talking about you know how the police just kind of have been an issue mm -hmm. for, for black people specifically but you know it's not saying that it's it it happens to everyone 
You know, I'm not going to just act like we are the only ones who have issues, but we have issues though. We do. And we, we like to talk about them because we need to, we need the stories to be told so people can't think that we just living here all good all the time. And me specifically, I say we, but I have a pretty, I live a life that I'm comfortable living. You know what I'm saying? And I work with everybody. I have relationships with everybody and it don't really matter to me. You know, if you're a good person, you're good. I judge a man by his deeds. You know, I judge a person by their deeds. And that's all you can really ask a person to do. You know what I'm saying? But if you're condemning people by color, that's something you can't even have. You don't have no control over anyway. It's just not right. So I just don't respect it. Condemn people uh, by color. Mm. Yeah. You can't you can't control that. So you you born into condemnation. And that's not fair because kids have to go grow, grow up. You know, we love the kids, bro. We got to take care of the kids, man. So don't treat kids bad because they for something they ain't got no control over. I just feel like that um, with what's happened, there's there's gonna there's there's a big change that has occurred amongst our youth, and I feel like that, especially that you know eighteen to twenty four age group of kids, you know, just out of high school and college, like it's the young adults. <laughs> this is like they've grown up in the past what ten years of culture that's been pretty much mixed in a lot of ways and then something like this happens it's almost like a lot of the kids it was brought to their attention like oh well hold up you know mm -hmm. um, a lot of kids have just grown up not really seeing a whole bunch of stuff like that you know but right it's out there now and um it's going to continue to be put out there and you know i'll say stuff's, this stuff's going to keep happening i'll say this i've seen more white people stick their neck out behind it since this George Floyd that's like losing family members, you know what I'm saying? Getting disowned and just mm -hmm. get tore up on Facebook by their family, but they still sticking up. Like I heard more voices from white people in this situation than ever. So I think it's important for us to try to, f that it's important to see that other people are trying to figure out our problems alongside us and supporting us and, and recognizing and acknowledging it publicly knowing that you know everybody ain't down with it who they who they really grew up around and that's going that's you know that's interesting to see to be honest is it make me feel pretty good but also mm -hmm. it's like i also can't help but think like we've been saying this <laughs> you know what i'm saying like dave Chappelle said it like wait we he was joking about the one thing he kind of, some thing that he said that was kind of funny was like People don't want to hear from celebrities. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I've, and if you saying that I'm just talking about like Don, Don, he said Don Lemon was like, where is this person? Why are they not speaking on here? Like, I dare him to say my name. Mm -hmm. Have you been watching my specials? He been talking about this. It ain't nothing new to him. It yeah. ain't nothing. It, it definitely ain't nothing new to me either. Well, that's what he was talking about. It's, it's just the people that live in these communities, they're the ones doing the talking, really. Yeah. You know, yeah. standing up. And that's why I feel like I guess it, it's not really hit my community. So like you won't see me out really protesting or marching, I guess, you know, I guess I'm more or less, I hope that by how I treat people of the opposite race, it could steer them in a different direction. Mm -hmm. But is my influence over them stronger than everything else they're getting right now in the media and whatnot? You know what I'm saying? You can only do what you can do, bro. That's it. <sighs> Look, I, you know, I got love for you. I know how you, our relationship has been over the years. So you ain't never made me feel no type of way other than like, I'm a man. But bruh, you know, like, like you said, it don't, the things that I've had, to, that I've been affected by don't affect you, but that don't mean your life just been no easy life. I know what you've been through too. And I know what you didn't overcame. So I respect that. And I, I judge you by your deeds, bro. Mm -hmm. that's, that's all we can do like all of my white friends that I got I judge them by their deeds and and that's and I all of my black friends that I got I judge them by their deeds so but we all make mistakes so I hope that I'm forgiven for mine <laughs> the ones that I've made and the ones that I will make in the future I agree man um uh oh we got a question about Candace Owens bro 
and I didn't really say my opinion about her. You you talked about her, but yeah, I mean that yeah. that could be safe for another another day. Or was it? Is it somebody <laughs> running out of time? Where we at? We have been online for we're, hours. We're, we're out we're out of we got time. we got three minutes left, so my, I don't really have much opinion on Candace Owens anyway. Mm -hmm. I ain't tripping on her. Like, Again, I ain't, I ain't even got time for I, her, bro. I, yeah, I I don't want to go into it either, but I'm just I saying pull, I don't want to give out no pull up anyway. Just, just I'm just saying though, fan. Reed. But, well, I mean, I've heard her speak and I like some of the things she has to say, but I just think it's it's weird how the majority of white America that's looking for this this connection to black people is like, okay, hey guys, I like this black person. You know what I'm saying? And, and she's she she's talking speak. about stuff for the black community in any way. Well, I don't, I don't, just because she's black she doesn't mean she gets to speak for the black community, Reed. I know nobody can speak for the entire community. We, are, we can only speak for ourselves. We are not one. As much as we try to stick together, we-, we Reed, we're, we're just humans, yeah, man. We're just humans. She don't, she don't represent me or you. She represents herself and her thoughts are her own. Right. I just, my, my whole thing is like, yeah, people have people have said, "Hey, what about this chick?" I've never probably listened to more. I've listened to a few things, like one video maybe. Mm -hmm. it's like some of the stuff, I was like, "Okay, I, I agree with some of that." Some of that I, I don't really have some of that. Some of it I don't really have knowledge on. That mm -hmm. doesn't, you know. I was kind of fifty fifty, but honestly, I haven't I haven't Google searched her. I didn't watch any more videos. I didn't no. find out why people are post. I just see it, and I'm like, I'm not really. It doesn't affect me. Whatever she says is not going to change my perception on you or me or cops or Floyd, whatever. You know what I'm saying? She's just giving her opinion. I get tired of all that. Man. I can't say that I haven't agreed with anything she said. I, it's a couple of things. I'm like, you know what? She right. But I haven't watched. I watched I watch like two videos of her, I think. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm, I'm good on Candace Owens. I ain't tripping on her. I ain't really. I'm not going to bad mouth the lady, though. You know, I, like, we, they, we don't they, have to agree. They they should help. He, he, went he, in. he let her have it. <laughs> but mm -hmm. that's a comedian. Of course, a comedian going to roast somebody. Like, what? Yeah. I don't, I don't get paid to roast people. But if I did, I would roast people. I would be well, good at it, too. We can we can roast some people. We got to get out of here. Um, <laughs> we got to do, like, some kind of closing, bro. We probably should have thought this out. No, we had it. Um, if, if, if no one put any questions any more questions um we got a lie so when the next show is next sunday night yeah y'all um come come back next week we got we got to get on the earlier Malcolm we got to thank our stuff. viewers bro we got to thank our viewers okay i want to shout just, out I'm, everybody i'm not i'm not telling no one to like the video and subscribe i'm not one of those people man we're not, <laughs> bro, I'm not we gotta to promote all right i'm the marketing director i'm of not doing i'm not doing that checkers. i put like just not a checker like First of all, ain't me. nobody tell me about my typo. Oh, God, man. Y'all supposed to be my friends. Mm. Tell me about my typo. Don't let me be out here with boogers in my nose and don't say nothing to me, man. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come on, y'all. But uh, yeah, so like and subscribe. I just recreated the Facebook page. We really not that good at all this stuff, but we doing it. And uh you know, keep, some, keep tuning in, in keep uh, supporting us. We're putting them on YouTube. We're putting them on YouTube, right? We're putting YouTube them on page. YouTube. We got the Anchor FM deal for podcasting. It put it on Apple Music, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Mm -hmm. I'm working on this, bro. I got this marketing thing. You just, uh, you fall back on that one. I just, I'm just, I'll just be the, the white voice of the show. <laughs> you the white voice of the show. You my bro. I'm here so you don't seem racist. Let's be honest. <laughs> and you're here so here I don't, so seem, don't racist. seem racist. <laughs> like, you know. Let's go I'm all, feeling it. I'm feeling it. So we, we protect each front. other from being racist. From being profiled. For being profiled as racist for our opinions and thoughts on whatever we talk about. And, and, and like we can just openly converse about anything and hopefully learn from each other. Like I learned some stuff from you and I'm going to take that with me. Right, right. I'm, so. 
I'm, I'd much rather listen to 10 minutes of Malcolm Reed talk about life than Candace Owens or Dave Chappelle or Dave Chappelle for that matter. You know, yeah, okay? yeah. But we I'm was going to see Joe, Dave Chappelle and Joe Rogan for like yeah. two hours, hopefully, eventually one day. Joe Rogan. Uh, <laughs> Joe Rogan? You my only. <laughs> no, they said that about Alice Apple. I want you to know something about me, Joe Rogan. I oh smoke my rocks. God. Oh, Dave Chappelle. Just mm, mm, we'll, we'll, go, we'll, we'll go catch them whenever they come back out. But, um, yeah, for sure. All right, All right man. man. Was, All right, bro. Uh, it was good talking to you. It really was, man. We had fun. I think we, we did it. The show is getting better, dog. We're getting better at this. All right, man. Bad me see you. All right. Chestnut checkers. We'll holler at y'all next week. Around the same time. We're going to tell you earlier next time. Atlanta United. Shout out, Carlos. Peace. Blessings. Uh, we got a what's a what, how you say goodbye in uh, Italian, bro? Ciao. Kobe would say mm. ciao. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Kobe. All right, Yuri. We'll see you. All right. And we out. Peace. <laughs>